thanks for tuning in. Today I've got some cabbage rolls. I'll start at the beginning. My mom makes very good cabbage rolls. And uh, everybody in our family just loves her cabbage rolls. And, uh, you know, when people like marry into our family or they're born into our family, uh, they all learn to love my mom's cabbage rolls. So I have a nephew who moved down to Seattle a number of years ago. And uh, he just loves my mom's cabbage rolls, it's his grandma. So he was coming up for a visit and he wanted to know if, uh, if she would make some cabbage rolls for him. But I think he kind of forgets that she's 96 years old and that uh, she's not as spry as she used to be. So I, I told him, I said, well, Lyndon, I'll make you some cabbage rolls because my mom showed me how to make them years ago. So I made some cabbage with Linda and I made a whole batch. That was the uh, night before last. And he came up here and he had a big, big out. Him and his wife and his daughter. And he really enjoyed them. So he was happy. And we had them at my mom's place. So of course she got to have some too. These are my mom's recipe. I use half pork, half beef, salt and pepper. And that's it. And then uh, usually about two cans of Campbell's tomato soup, depending on how many uh, cabbage rolls you make. I normally have more sauce than this, but my nephew was scooping out the last of it so there was like these three left over and I he had a big pig out because yeah, we had some the next day too I think Linda and I made 27 we had enough to fill almost two small roasters so uh, yeah he went home uh, quite satisfied This next picture is a picture of an eagle. I took this picture of an eagle uh, shortly after I retired in May of 2022. One of the neighboring islands has this big cliffs and bluffs you can climb up there. And uh, we well, actually you can drive up. We drove up there. And Linda's been taking pictures there for years of eagles. You know, either the same tree or the same nest or whatever. But when you're up on these cliffs, you're almost level with the uh, the nest, which is about 150 feet away. So we're way at the back and they're out there. I mean, the, the tree is quite a, a long ways from the cliffs and very high up. So she's been taking pictures of that particular nest for years. So, um... Uh, I think I snapped about 300 pictures. That's, uh, I just chose that one. Because I got a lot of all kind of the same.
I forgot to mention I put rice in these too. I put the rice in raw. I just cooks for about maybe 90 minutes, two hours, depending. Use about 90 minutes. I'm going to show you a couple of high school pictures. This is Linda's high school picture in 1974. Her birthday is September, so she was actually 15, going on 16 when this she got this picture taken. And uh, we met in 74, but never actually hooked up until 2014, 40 years later. So if you watch my video called uh, People Are Strange, A Love Story, you'll uh, hear all about it. Next picture is me in high school. It's the same year. I look a little bit different, don't I? I have long hair on that one. It was the 70s, folks. These cabbage rolls are good. Now, I have a picture of my mom. She was born in 1926, so currently she's 96 years old. She loves to eat, so she's out at her favorite restaurant. It's called Alice's. Alice's restaurant. Now this next picture is my buddy John. He's my best friend. John's a big boy, he's 6'5". I'm 5'11", he's 6'5". So he got six inches on me. But he's uh, he's about 260, I think. He's a big guy. And he likes to eat. Him and I go out for a lasagna at our favorite restaurant about twice a, twice a month. And we get the, the extra large lasagna. And he always has the apple pie and ice cream to finish off. And I did that once and it was just way too much. I ate it, but I had to lie down after. It was like, wow, that was a lot of food. I mean, the lasagna comes with two pieces of garlic toast, like big pieces, and it's a huge one. And then ice cream and, and pie on top of that. Wow, way too much. Oh. Oh, boy. This is a picture of the, uh, the swimming pool. This is what it looks like when it's all frozen over. You can't even tell there's a swimming pool there. Now I'm going to show you a picture of what it normally looks like with me floating in the swimming pool in the summertime. So you can see the difference. Quite a difference there. I apologize for any noise from my utensils. I'm going to show you one more picture here. It's a baby picture of me. I think that's about a year and a half. I hadn't done my first haircut yet. But when I got my first haircut, my mom actually saved a lock of my hair, which I still have. So that was me. That would have been probably around 1958. Well, these are good cabbage rolls. Linda's away visiting her dad today. He lives on the same island where I was taking pictures of those eagles. And he's quite elderly himself and he, he needs a lot of support, like home support, and he has neighbors helping him. Linda goes about once a week, so I'll be cooking tonight, so I think I'll be doing veal parmesan with uh, linguine noodles. Or, no, no, Alfredo, I'll do Alfredo. I use linguine noodles, but I'll make Alfredo.
Let me show you the picture of Linda on Valentine's Day. That's Linda on Valentine's Day, uh, 2022. Now here's a picture of uh, me and Linda at the Colosseum in Rome. That was taken about uh, 2017. I'll show you a picture of, uh, well, I can show you a picture of my mom and dad, but before I show you a picture of, of them, that trip to Italy was uh, pretty good. It was, it was a cruise, and we uh, went to Rome and, you know, Pisa and places like that. And it was just really nice, just amazing seeing all these places. So much fun, that's such a good time. Anyways, I really enjoyed it. Somebody's honking their horn, I don't know who that is, but anyways... As I speak, we still have a lot of snow on the ground, and they might be getting more. You know, usually here, where I live, we get a little bit of snow. If we get snow at all, and then it uh, melts very quickly, we usually just get a lot of rain. Last Christmas, we had a white Christmas for the first time in about eight years. So we might get another one this year, I'll see. But we rarely get a white Christmas. So here's a picture of my mom and dad. Taken uh, in 1983. My dad passed away in uh, 2004. like to do some more uh, picture videos like I, I like to do one where uh, I did a video where I was eating pizza and talking about our trip across Canada I thought I would uh, do something like that again but this time show pictures or maybe our trip to Asia or Cuba Cuba was interesting yeah. my mom is uh, Norwegian she wasn't born in Norway, but that's where her, uh, her grandparents were. Actually, I think her parents were born in Minnesota, and her grandparents were born in Norway. But she uh, she didn't speak English uh, until she was until she went to school. They only spoke uh, Norwegian at home, so she's fluent in Norwegian. Mind you, I think she's forgotten a lot of it because she doesn't speak as much as she used to. I remember when I was a kid, when she got together with her uh, her sisters or her, her brothers or whoever, they would sit in the Galloway in Norwegian. And I, I just, it, it amazed me. I didn't know that people knew other languages. It was really weird, you know. And of course, I couldn't understand a word. But uh, anyways, yeah. She makes this thing. It's called lefsa. It's a Norwegian thing. Uh, lefsa is made with uh, a lot of flour and potatoes. And it's... You flat, you roll it up, and you you put it on a griddle like you would a tortilla, you know, you know like it's that sort of thing. You know, I, I gotta be honest, I always found it to be kind of starchy, you know. Now, I've never um, tried it with any kind of a meat or anything should. A lot of times they, they put butter on and brown sugar and roll it up and eat it that way or you know, I don't know, I, I always felt like I maybe I I wasn't honoring my Norwegian bloodlines by not really embracing lefsa that much, but I mean I think if I was to eat it more like a burrito I'd probably enjoy it more, you know because like I said, it's very just potato-y and flour-y you know, and kind of, kind of starchy and Kind of bland, you know, but uh, anyways, yeah, 
but it's kind of a Norwegian thing, I guess. But Bum makes very good cabbage rolls and pierogies. Uh, she got on to making pierogies years ago. She was working at a, uh, oh, this is back in the 70s. We all got jobs. I may have told the story before, but she got a job at a restaurant that uh, they had pierogies on the menu. And there's a Ukrainian woman there who taught Mom how to make pierogies. And Mom got so good at it that, um, you know, she uh, had the, the army camp phone her up one time. And hundreds of pierogies for this uh, this big thing they were doing, you know. So she did. So she was quite uh, quite famous for her pierogies. You know, it's funny. Growing up in the Midwest. Got a lot of snow back there. Sometimes it would snow by Halloween, and uh, it would still be around in April. Uh, but yeah, and it was so cold, oh, like 40 below. And I remember how exciting it was to see the snow melting in April and the bare pavement. There'd still be mounds of snow, you know, on the sides of the the streets that had been you know like left there by the plow or whatever. And just to see that bare pavement and getting my bicycle out of the garage or the basement, wherever, and going for my first ride in the spring, oh, it was just heaven on earth. It was just amazing to be able to do that. But uh, a lot of people out here on, on the island, uh, snow is a novelty, so they get it, they really enjoy it. I'd get through no exception. used to say, Dad, how come you don't like snow? I said, well, it's not that I don't like snow. I just didn't like it six months of the year, you know. Because back there in Saskatchewan, we used to get a lot of snow. And like I said, it was so cold that it never went away. The snow you got in late October, early November, was the last to leave in, in uh, you know, late March or early April. Because it was so cold, it just never melted. It just got layered and layered and layered and just kept piling on. love snow and most people that were born out here love it but uh, and Linda likes it she's out there you know I'm shoveling the driveway and she's making a snowman but she enjoys it it's a good cabbage this was the last of them Slide that a bit closer. Try not to scrape the plate. Another thing that bugged me about snow was not so much back in the Midwest. Because people back there were used to it. get a skip of snow, you get like a, an inch and people start folding and sick. It used to happen all the time where I worked. You get an inch of snow and people suddenly can't come to work. It was interesting because they could always make it home. You know, you could have a blizzard and they could always make it home from work, but they could just never could seem to come in. <laughs> so we ended up working short a lot, which really bugged me. I remember in 1996, we had the, uh, well, they called the blizzard in 96. Man, we got a lot of snow. That was the biggest snowfall we had in 80 years. I may have told this story before too, but I remember my, we had a bit of a driveway like that. My ex went and parked her, her car across the street of my neighbors because this driveway was nice and flat. And it, this was a car that still had the antenna. You know, and all you could see of that car was the antenna sticking out. That's all you could see. But once again, my kids loved it. You know, schools were closed. And, you know, I had to park my van at the, the mall about a couple blocks.
miles away. I had to leave it there for about a week. And I'd walk over in the morning, get in, you know, scrape it off, warm it up, and drive to work, and come home and just park it there because I couldn't even get up my own street. And when I finally could get up my own street, there's no place to park because, you know, the, the plows that come along just plowed all the snow and it was so high. So one time I told my, my two boys, I said, let's, let's get out there. You know, they were just little at the time, but I was willing to help them. And we went out there, and we all shoveled, and my, my ex came out there, we all shoveled, and we made a space so I could get my, my, bring my van home and actually park in front of the house. You know, it's kind of like sort of shoehorned in there, but at least it was at home. I didn't have to walk to the mall anymore the first thing in the morning. And of course, you worry about your vehicle too, and you leave it overnight somewhere. Like I said, you know, my, my nephew, he, uh, he was just tickled and uh, I, I made them for him, Linda and I made them for him, but you know, he, uh, like I said, he kind of forgets, he, he only sees his grandma maybe every couple of years and, and he forgets that she's no longer, you know, spry enough. I remember a few years ago, he wanted to come up for Thanksgiving as his grandma, are you going to be cooking a turkey and making cabbage rolls and, you know, you know, she, there, there's no way she could do that anymore. Actually, I, got, I bought a turkey the other day. The last few years, we've been getting those uh, frozen stuffed butter balls because it's just easier that way. So I'll take it over to Bump's house on uh, Christmas Eve because that's when we have our big get together. It's Christmas Eve. And Linda and I will throw it in the oven. Probably it's not very big. Maybe about 1 o'clock we'll put it in there. And uh, we did this last year too. And we'll prep all the veg and potatoes and come back and check on it maybe around three years so or four and then we'll come back again and everybody will be there and we'll have turkey and everything and it's just so much easier for my mom because she just can't do that kind of stuff anymore but she still likes to have Christmas at her house because you know she's really into Christmas and you know she puts your tree up in November you know what I mean and uh, you know nobody loves Christmas more than she does and it's hard to buy something for because what do you buy for a woman's 96? She has three of everything. So I always find something like that. Linda and I have picked out a nice sweater this year. And she likes those Werther's, those chewy Werther can candies and stuff. I used to buy her costume puzzle books, but she, her eyesight's so bad, even with the big print, she has uh, trouble seeing them, you know. But she's just happy that we, uh, you know, uh, that everybody's there. That's the main thing. She just likes to have the whole family there. And my son's coming over from Vancouver, so he'll be there. He was there last year, too, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, sometimes the roads are a bit of a schmozzle. The first snowfall we had there about a week ago, yeah, there's cars, you know, piled up, you know, on the side of the road. People slamming into each other, rear-ending each other. And some people, their, their snow tires are so crap. I mean, they don't even have snow tires. They just have their regular tires are of all seasons and they can't get anywhere so they abandon their vehicle right there they can't do anything with it and really all you need is if you're going up a hill for instance and there's a lot of hills around here all you need is one person to get stuck at the top and then everybody else behind them stops the next thing you know you got a parking lot you know, so. and the place where I get my tires on man they've been busy lately Woo. I got my tires put on in October. I finally got smart. I used to wait till about November 1st. It's, it's like a zoo. So I, had, I put them on in the middle of October. And now you, you drive down there, especially when there's a, a forecast of snow, where it actually does start snowing. Everybody and their dog is down there wanting to get their snow tires on. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of interesting. But I don't mind, you know, it's fine now that I'm retired. Uh, the snow doesn't bother me because, like I said, I'm not working. It doesn't, I don't care if people don't come to work because it's, it's, there's too much snow. I mean, it doesn't affect me because I don't work anymore. So I just enjoy making these videos for you wonderful people. So that's what makes me happy. Uh, I kind of wondered if I'd be able to adjust to retirement. But uh, no problemo. You know, I uh, I just started doing this, this whole YouTube thing. I've, uh, I, I reshot my uh, my 
video for my uh, my cooking channel. It was a carbonara one, and this time I I've stuck to a more traditional carbonara. So I just finished that off, and I used three different cameras. So I got some different angles of that, made it more interesting. I I started using I probably mentioned this before too. I started using the cap cut uh, editor, and I've really caught on to it. You know, so it's just you know it's really good. I also started using to capture uh, the problem is I was the reason I was excited about using that was I was able to disable my autofocus you know otherwise you got that you know but I've had problems with uh, the audio syncing up properly and a few people have pointed that out it's minimal but it's, it's enough to irritate me actually uh, and really I think what I need is a new computer because my computer is an old Acer from about oh five years ago or more. So that's just a little Acer. I think it's called Acer Slim, a little tiny thing. So I priced a few out, and um, I might end up getting like a gaming computer, or something that can really handle a lot of video and stuff. So if you have any suggestions as to what kind of a computer would work good for, you know, uh, editing and video, and bear in mind I have a lot of pictures. I have a, I've been taking pictures for years. I save every picture I have, and I've scanned all the old family pictures and that kind of thing. I got lots of video, so I need a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of whatever you need, <laughs> you know, disk space or whatever. So, anyways, well, my friends, it's kind of a short video, but I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy those those pictures. I'm gonna plan to do some more like this. If, if that's what you people want to see, I'll have something more organized. These pictures kind of jumped around a bit. But I just wanted to kind of try this out as my first attempt. So we'll see how it goes. So anyways, and one of these days I'll, I might make these capsules for my cooking channel. But you know, it, it, the cooking channel, it, it, it sounds easy to do. But to condense everything down where it's, it's very short and quick. And to have all these different camera angles, it takes a long time to do that. And you really got to think it through you know it, it sounds easier than what it is so and, and nowadays when you look at cooking channels on on youtube a lot of them within a minute they've kind of they don't even show some guy cooking they just they have the recipes and some music and then and the ingredients bang 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 and that's it it's over and done within like a minute you know so uh, i was kind of going old school where i was like the uh, the galloping gourmet or something you know but i i I went, I trimmed it down from 20 some, some minutes, about 20 some minutes, about 5 minutes. So, and I've got three camera angles this time, so that's a little bit more uh, professional, more interesting. Anyways, um, that, that was my cabbage roll picture video, so I thank you for tuning in. I hope you're doing well, and look after yourselves and each other, okay? Cheers. Bye now.